Welcome back. Up now, we have Forum Daily's energy update with GasWizard.ca's Dan McTeague. He is a senior petroleum analyst, and GasWizard.ca is a gas price prediction website. He joins us now with his outlook. Well, thank you very much for that, Nima. And of course, uh, what a week we've seen here on energy prices in diesel across Canada. They've actually dropped uh, to levels that I think uh, are quite surprising. Surprising in the sense that uh, demand uh, seems to be the reason why uh, American, uh, the American picture for inventory seemed to have uh, had a very positive impact. In other words, Americans since July the 4th have actually uh, been uh, foregoing driving. Uh, demand is down probably about two or three percent and supply continues to roar ahead with refineries doing something that uh, always puts them in trouble in the long run that's uh, running at pretty high rates of operation 95 96 percent and remember of course uh, in a good part of the united states they've lost anywhere from three to ten refineries from running at full tilt uh, since 2019 so uh hats off to refiners meeting demand but i don't think they can continue doing it forever and we're not always going to get a, a break when it comes to uh, what's happening in the U.S. Gulf Coast. It's been very quiet. Uh, I know this might be disappointing news for climate alarmists, but there are no hurricanes or any activity of any type in the U.S. Uh, Gulf of Mexico uh, that could uh, continue to maintain prices. But I think we've bottomed out. And I, I say that because oil is now at points where it hasn't been uh, since before the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. I think there's a, a lot of skittishness, a lot of nervousness among traders, but uh, you know, there's only so many excuses you can trot out, including higher interest rates, including uh, yet another wave of lockdowns in China before you realize that sooner or later, uh, those who are producing products to catch up with world demand for everything are going to have to come up for air and they're going to have to buy a lot more oil. Uh, that means, of course, uh, with sanctions being imposed on Russia, uh, with natural gas prices going through the roof in uh, Europe. Uh, we're looking at a scenario where possibly beginning in August, uh, prices are going to begin to recover. Not so much to the point where we were, where we saw uh, gasoline prices in Toronto hit 215.9, 233.9 in Vancouver, uh, or about 230, 229 in Montreal. But it's, uh, it's certainly a scenario that sees us moving back to potentially almost $2 a litre. Of course, provinces like Ontario have dropped uh, some degree of tax, so that has certainly helped. But the federal government continues its one-sided policy of increasing prices uh, through carbon taxes, whether that's the existing carbon tax, in which uh, your rebates don't amount to, to what you were actually having to put out and their consequential impact on the cost of everything, including food, well, you're not rebated for that. Their second carbon tax, the clean fuel standard. That will start to bite in about a year from now, but in the meantime, it means that refineries are gonna to have to ramp up uh, production of uh, ethanol. And that of course means displacing production of food that it would otherwise go for consumable reasons. Um, for that reason, we can continue to see inflation uh, again, uh, rearing its ugly head. Interesting last week that the Bank of Canada governor finally had to admit what we've been saying here, what I've been saying uh, with you as well, Nima, and that's that uh, we uh, are no longer the petrodollar. The Canadian dollar is not responding to the high price of oil because we've killed pipelines, natural gas and oil in this country and thought nothing of it, but it's actually leading to about a 30% drop in our purchase power. And that means, of course, the Bank of Canada finally had to admit they're shocked by it, surprised by it, can't explain it. I can, but they won't. Um, but that's uh, likely to mean higher interest rates, which means higher borrowing costs, not just for you and I, but for the government of Canada. That 1% increase last week has meant the federal government is going to have to find 13 billion, extra billion dollars to make up its shortfall. Uh, so anybody who thinks that uh, playing around with energy prices and fooling around with green energy has no consequence, well, I think you, uh, you're starting to find serious disappointment because we all can't make ends meet. Uh, bottom line, this time next week, I think we're looking at an average increase of about three cents a litre across the country. Saturday will be the best day to buy gasoline. So if you're uh, shopping around, get out on uh, the 23rd of July, Saturday, buy your fuel. Because going forward, prices are likely to go up an average of three cents a litre across Canada. And it really doesn't matter where you are coast to coast. Well, Nima, that's a wrap for this week. Have a great weekend and uh, we'll be back at it this time next week. Always a lot to consider, Dan. Thanks for that. Again, that was Dan McTeague with GasWizard.ca. He's also the president of Canadians for Affordable Energy.
All right, stay tuned. When we return, we take a look into the latest developments in the world of crypto. Forum Daily's cryptocurrency and digital asset update with Catherine Murray is up next. Catherine is the host of The Buck Stops Here, where she unpacks the latest big moves in the markets and the world of finance. And after that, we'll take a look at the news-making headlines around the world. So stay tuned to Forum Daily. We'll be right back.